Hi family, we're in Banjul, the Gambia. And we're about to meet with our group. And this is the National Museum and our group is right over there. And it's been this uh, beautiful, um, you know, beautiful day so far. And family, we have only been in the country less than a day. But you know it is, um, once we got settled last night, got ourselves organized so we can get back up in the morning and start this beautiful city Wuchin culture tour. And the others are gonna stay in. So two people are staying in, so we're good. We are welcome. Greetings, our brother, greetings. That's my museum, Hassan Tise here. Yeah, he's my... He calls me teacher. A long time ago. He <laughs> told me. Yes. At high school. In the boarding school. Amazing. So this is the museum. Where are you taking them? In the museum. First of all, I'm only... Don't forget the art place. The art place. The art place. The art place. They are working right now. Uh, okay. Yeah, okay. They are working on that place. Okay. Have you been to Kajikari? Yes, I'm going to be here. Are you at Fort No, we, maybe tomorrow we'll be coming to Fort Bullen. Yeah, I saw the best time we are passing through. We have to go where? At Fort Bullen. Fort Bullen, where are you going to be in Right on the mouth of the river Gambia. Where they used to drop the... Uh, the oh, there's the same thing you explained to me yesterday? Yes, yes, yes. Oh, perfect. Oh, I thought it was a different yeah. fort. So I was like, man, yeah. Yeah. more forts? Oh, you have to go there. Why? Your experience can be complete if you see that place. We have a small exhibition there, very interesting on the role of the Gambia in the suppression of the slave trade. Yeah. And the, very, um, the, uh, the exhibition there also has a lot about the, I mean, ancient kingdoms, you know, which were existing here, you know, before the British occupation. Okay. So the fort will be very, very useful, uh, very interesting. Now where you are here has a lot of history. This place is called the Patros Court. Patros has been the it's old name for this town, now called Banjo. Okay, you know the British, you know, had the you know habit of naming towns and you know streets after you know their own people. Uh, I mean, very cool. So until 1973, our capital was um, called Patros. Okay, and here was the British, you know, I mean, the official club. In the evening, they will come here. I take their drink, and, you know, play their games. And because really, the colonial setup was like segregationist. You had clubs that were strictly for the British officials, like here. No Africans could come here, except to serve as servants you know, and waiters. Okay? But the Africans too, they had their private clubs, like the reform club. Okay, so that was the segregationist, um, I mean, um, you know, model. Okay. So after, you know, the end of colonial rule, you know, when the British left, this place became the national library. Okay. And then for a time, it was also our parliament. Then in 1985, you know, the building was remodeled into a national museum, explaining the history material culture of the Gambia. Yeah, in terms of the photographs and archaeological objects and ethnographic material and so on as you will see. Okay? So it's basically a history museum. But really we have tried to you know sort of I mean I mean collapse or you know, like summarize the history of the country in, in this small space here. And, and yeah, I'm sure you find it very very uh, maybe you'll also go to Jufure? Oh yes, we're going there tomorrow. Tomorrow. Yeah, our museum is there also. I'll call them to wait for me. Okay. There also we have a very interesting museum there. You're talking about a slave museum as uh, uh, yeah, uh, yeah. Yes, yeah, yes, okay. yes, it's called the Slavery Museum. You know, the whole Kunta Kinte story, you know, roots, it's all explained there. Uh, you'll see the Kinte family homestead also. Okay. I mean, I'm the great I am a great, great, I and mean, descendants of, of, of the Kinta. Okay. And of course, we also visit the island. Okay. 
uh, where Kunta Kinte departed from in 17, I mean 67, on the ship, the Lord Legoni. Okay. We took him to America as a captain. So you are most welcome. It's a perfect, uh, are you going to lead us into the museum? Perfect, I'm going to leave. Yeah, you are welcome. So, an another introduction. Welcome to the National Museum. It's what should be called a post colonial museum. Because it is 19, 1985, um, 20 years after independence. Like many African museums, where in colonial constructs, meaning it was the Europeans who established the museums and it therefore has the uh, narrative of the European mindset. Okay. So this is uh, uh, like an overview of the capital. As you can see, it's a small town. Overview of Banjo. Yeah. Yeah, you know, taken from the arch. Mm -hmm. From atop the arch. I mean, the capital is built on an island called St. Mary's Island. Because really what the British wanted was to have a strategic you know, settlement to be able to um, control trade you know, along the river, okay? And also to be able to spread Christianity and also to develop commerce. Those were the three you know, reasons why they occupied this island. In 1860, I mean, I mean, those were the three selfish, I mean, I mean, reasons to the, you know, to the British occupation. Okay. So you are most welcome. It's, it's a small museum, you know, very explanatory, self-explanatory. So I'm sure you'll be able to. Okay. You are welcome. Well, appreciate you, appreciate you, brother, for the introduction, and we'll make our Thank way around Thank you and you. document some of the details. Thank you. Yeah. What? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You give them. Yes, I'll bring my card. I'll give you. I will talk because we are working on a roof festival. Okay, perfect. And I uh, will switch our uh, contacts and everything. Yeah. Let me bring my card. Right? Let me bring my card. And also my business cards, the business cards are in the back of your bag. Okay. And then they're in the other bag we have, which is a camcorder bag. Yes, so that way, wherever I go, we can always have we exchange communication. So we build a nice uh, roots and culture tour. And I do have some U.S. that I can give you. So we'll just get it exchanged so we can do the deposit. So family, we're getting things set up for that wonderful journey. I mean, because it, it, it's a little piece. So you're going to put it? Like, okay. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So, um, I don't know how much you got to put it from there. Yeah, just give me a minute to make sure we get it worked out. So family, uh, we're going to give you a footage of the museum and then we're going to be working on our, adjust, um, our organized setup for tomorrow. This is going to be a beautiful day tomorrow. Yes. It's going to be this historic. I've always heard about that journey yeah. that you take into you know, um, Jufri, Abreda, um, and Kunta Kinte Island. So that's what you hear us discussing here at the same time too. But this is what we passed by earlier, which is Arch 22. So when did the construction, you mentioned also um, Abdul, that this was under construction, what well, we saw earlier once we... Yeah, the fix, it was... Um, we came to Banjul. That the um, former president, it's an art that the former president, Mr. Jamme, built to um, just to, um, at the starting day of his uh, independence, for, for, according to him. That was July 22nd. So he was the soldier that was... Yeah, made the coup. That made the coup. So that was, a, that was the R22 uh, family that you're looking at right there. So that re represents his journey into... Uh -huh. in, in, into uh, his... Uh, in, in the history. Oh. Right? 
and when I was reading information on it, it made it seem like there's a museum. Perfect. Um, and I have my business cards in the side. They usually right here. Right here. Can I give you one minute? My brother's gonna show some documentation, family. And family, this is Ron and Cut. So, so here we have on display what is still likely in use in a typical compound in the Gambia. When we say compound in our uh, African setting, it means several generations living together. Okay? Several generations living together. There is a Children, large parents, forecourt. There is a large forecourt. Okay? And surrounded by you know, buildings. Okay? That's what we call a compound. So basically the idea of a house is a European you know, construct for us. Mm -hmm. Because we live um, you know, together. Okay? So the father will have a corner in the compound. When the children grow up, they have their own corners. When those children grow up, they have their own corners. So that in a compound, you can see up to three generations to four generations. Grandparents, parents, and grandchildren, all living with their wives, with their husbands, and children growing. And really, this is the social security system in our society. Because you look after each other in terms of illness, in terms of old age, and so on. You see. That is why we don't have like people's uh, like old people's home here or in this country. We don't know it, okay? Because of the compound system. So the compound system is like, you know, it's like a form of social security. It's like a social safety net. Because because you live together, you greet each other in the morning every day. You eat together. You, I mean, 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 get the stories, you know, I mean, around the fire in the middle of the compound every evening. So, so you come back, it's just like one big family. Okay? And in a typical African Gambian compound, you still see these things. The women still process the food like that the mortar and the pestle. Still out in the villages. You don't have machines. You see? Like these are all food processing material. Yeah, see, you know, colanders. I mean, I mean, like the woman will sit on this, you know, seat, all very natural, from 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 wood. And, you know, this also tells you that we are naturally environmentalists because everything is from the, from wood almost, or from clay, or from fiber. You see. So usually I tell my students, because I also teach at university, I mean, by nature, Africans have to be environmentalists by nature. Because everything here, somebody has to go into nature, uh, in a forest, in a bush, and to, I mean, I mean fasten them out of a log, um, you know, a tree, and so on and so forth. So, so, so that's why I just wanted to introduce you to this. Like even the, uh, oh, oh, you know, the tools for agriculture. Okay. Even the tools for agriculture. Hardly is anything elastic or plastic. Like the hoe. Uh, this brings us the rice. Okay. Uh, you know, which is our staple food. And you can see the hoe is a piece of wood. So if there's no forest, it means there's no hoe. See? Yeah. That's perfect, and it seems like I can get a better view from right here over here. That's why I changed position. Yeah. And this symbol symbolizes the role of the river in the Gambia. I, I you'll see tomorrow when you cross the ferry, the Gambia is associated with the river. In fact, our names come from the river. That's why we say the Gambia. It's like you say the Nile. The Nile, okay. Like the Mississippi. So that's where it comes from, the yeah, Gambia. Yeah, the Hudson yeah. River. Okay, so that's why we say the Gambia. And the river is our main geographical feature. We have no mountains, no highlands. I mean, I mean, I mean, it's the river. 
So the country is pretty much flat. Very much flat and everything, uh, we don't have, in this country you don't see east, not southwest. You either see a north bank of the river, where do you live? I live along the north bank of the or river. Or the southern uh, bank. Or like tomorrow you are going to the north bank of the river. Yeah. Or we we'll say uh, another way for the north bank would be called, the, is it the mouth? Well, you are now at the mouth because the capital is right on the mouth of the river. Well, this is where the river ends its journey of 1,100 kilometers from Guinea, passes through Senegal, passes through the Gambia, and empties here. Wow. Yeah. So thank you very much. Well, appreciate your um, story and National Center for Arts and Culture. I mean, uh, if you want to, if you. N-A-S-S-O-U-M-C-E-S-A-Y. There you go. So family, this is our wonderful brother here. Yeah. This uh, that we can see the name for yourself. Thank and you. if you can pronounce the name, yeah, Hasu Sise. Hasu Sise. Sise. Yeah. Thank you, brother. Brother, brother. Appreciate you. I'm looking forward to connecting with you more. Uh, this is very helpful. Yeah, most We're trying to document as much as possible to share with our brothers and sisters. Um, because and, I've always and, felt and, like yeah, I have to bring them because we are working on a roots festival. To, to memorialize the root story and the Kunta Kinta story. What year? 2022? Yeah. Yes. yes. You Let's know, last time I was there in 2006, in that's what we did. We did the root festival in 2006. Good. I was so impressed. And you'll be coming back. Oh, yes, uh, you know, you. so you have to keep on trying to get documentation to let people know the importance yeah. and encourage them because the more you have that's connected to the roots, the more it is for our people in the diaspora. A lot of our people in the diaspora, um, you know, and I've been there too, you know, you. you you're brainwashed about uh, Africa, uh, so it's up to us to educate each other. So that's what you see us doing with our camcorders, cameras, and documentation. So thank you for giving us the opportunity to film and share the information. It's my pleasure. Right, perfect, brother. So I'll definitely greet you before we close. Yeah. It's a family. It is a full to day that we have. I'm going to give you a nice feel of this museum. And this is my good brother Uzman. I love you. Look <laughs> like this museum, the title of this museum. We're trying to see your chin, the, the yeah. mask is blocking okay, it. Okay, yeah. Don't worry, let me move the mask. Yes. The title of this I promise I won't give you coronavirus. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> There's no coronavirus, it's just a political virus. The mask. Yeah. It's just for this to make people know what. The director of this museum was my teacher. He taught me in a boarding school. His name is Hasun Sise. He has books here. He's a historian. And he knows the culture of this country, especially even Africa. You know, he's a good guy. So we welcome everybody to come and see physical what is happening in the Gambia. And uh, we're playing the next academic year coming. We'll be having a very big roof festival. Normally it's held around Easter holidays. Uh, April, May, we normally have the Roots Festival. Sometimes in December, because we normally operate with holidays. So we pray everybody come, we come and see the Roots Festival. We go to Kunta Kinte, see where, where Kunta Kinte was the last place he left, departed from the city. Hey, and these are the hot houses we used to have in the Gambia before. Where people used to see them. So these are all things that you need to come and see yourself. Physical. Yeah, yeah I, I know this is a lot of traditional. Um, things that are shown, especially when our brother showed us the, uh, the compound. And everything that I, I see and we documented, it's basically what, um, um, you know, white European uh, countries stole the ideas and built it up to another level. Yeah. So even, even the hole that he showed that was made from, you know, from wood. Yeah. You and go to... They take everything to Europe, and again, they want to bring it back to Africa, and then make it more expensive. There is no history in African history in Europe, and we still Africans we continue learning European history. Why? We have to follow our history and know more about the histories. These are some of the things that we have to adopt. So now these are all the students they come around to know about the history of their culture and their country. And before we go up, uh, I see a lot of men and women. Uh, who are all these different men and women? So these are traditional uh, women and men, like during the time of our history. Time, you know, these movements you see, they are the ones who used to dance, cook for the governors, you know. So, men are also there to use to go and fake firewood, drumming, whatever. And, and then we have that wall right there. Yeah, I thought I saw some military officers, no? But they were good. You have, so, you know, 
These are the municipal of Bayul, the chairman and the mayors from 1959 to 2017. So these are the names of all the municipal of Bayul, the chairmen. So this was the number one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, and thirteen. So I know Pastor Ajino was a great guy, he was my friend. Perfect. Uh, it's, uh, and this is what I remember this, me and you talking yesterday more about uh, right there. The family were right there, the, the connection that brought our bu uh, bus over from Bara to Banjo. You, you you still ready to take us uh, upstairs? Let's go to the and see. And family, it's a small museum, but a lot of powerful information in the museum itself. So this is not this of of of, of, of Gambia people. This is what is all this. Family, just like uh, the Gambia is a small country, but there's so much people history and culture in this one beautiful country. And so these are some of the the arches. Calf Senegal. You know, this is a plastic cast of a bone. You know, this is a head of fowl in a cell deposit. You know, they find these bones during the time of the wars. People die, you know. So this has they found. That's a low late stone age technology. Yes, in So family when we explain to you that we are the, the creators and the foundation of roots, culture, history, civilization. You know, from the Gambia to different countries to even the historical places that a lot of us love, which are Egypt. It's just all us. Um, so we're looking at a modern day race of people who you know, have basically you know, built up and stole civilization, but we are the foundation. So if we're the foundation, we also can be the same people who organize ourselves to really build the future of what we need to build. Everything that you see today as far as us being divided and conquered is not what it can always and will be. That's why you know we push a strong energy for us to come together, put our resources together, invest in ourselves, and invest in our children because we still have the youngest population on the planet as far as this, like this, this black people itself. Look what they were using to know now. These are the woods they used to drill. If you want to make a drilling, you know, so we they use a drill, but now we are using machineries because we forget about our culture. This you don't need electricity to have this. You just need a small power to use it. You don't consume any water. You don't consume any electricity, and you can have what you want. So but that's now, yeah. so, so there you go, family. That's that, that's so. Yeah. This is an ancient version of what the modern day drill system drill, is. Yeah. And so we're telling you is like go find out, go see where in Europe you see anything that predates what we're showing you. It doesn't exist. This cemetery is the one they use, like when they are making uh, bangles. You don't need to, they just put it inside the fire. Then this one, you blow it, you have air, you keep on boiling, it, boiling, it, and then you light the fire down here, come and see. You see? The air will come here, and this will be on top of the charcoal, will be there, and then this will be blowing the charcoal. Then they make this kind of weapons. When they are making this kind of weapons, this is what they use to hurt them and beat them. These are all the ones they used to use. So, see them? And these are the farming tools we have. These are all the original farming tools we use. Iron, iron, age, technology. See, family? Yeah. 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 And when we talk about early iron age technology, where was Europe at? Where was the white people in Europe? What were they doing? They were uncivilized. They weren't. Yeah. 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 So, we're not just. You know, so for those who think we're trying to do something that we're not doing, we, what we're doing is explain the reality of it because even people like myself, you know, you know, you don't know what you know. So I've been putting my work in and doing my best to educate myself because we've been brainwashed, you know, just to think so many different things. So that's why this is so important uh, work. And me and my good brother Usman has really been connecting because we're gonna do some yeah, good things together as business people. Like this is the place also. You know, this is made by Mort. It's very cold. <laughs> and it does show the age, the time. It is a, no, Jibina pot. It's a pot they made by the local women. 
that they use to put water. It's very cold for drinking also. If you don't have the calabas, you can use the malt and then put water there and then people use it for drinking. Very cold, very nice. You have them still, some people have them in the villages that are using them. You're right, it does. This is malt, yeah. It's, uh, it's, it's found at the rice fields areas. There's a special malt we have here. Yeah, they can make this. This also in Senegal. They have Gambia and Senegal have this kind of malt. There you go, family. You can also use the calabash. Yeah. So, so this one, when you are cooking, they use this, they put the rice here to steam the rice. This one. This is the one they use to steam the rice with. So, you know, if you are making dove sticks, this is the one they use for dove sticks. And everything you showing me look like things that we yeah. see nowadays. This is where you put to take bath. Yeah. yeah. You fetch water, you put here at your backyard. This is for taking bath. And this is the one they use to cook it. All is mud, no metal. It's natural from the mud. Before they use this for cooking. Mm. You see? Yeah. So all things that they use physically. Yeah. Yes, family is the great Senegalese. So these are the old planet. The scientists. And Sheikh Antediep said. Mm -hmm. it's civilization of barbarism. So what we have is civilization yes. and the people have conquered us and stolen from us are barbarians. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you can everything predates any kind of what Europe calls civilization. And I can take you to many other countries and you'll see the same thing too. But yeah. if you just don't know or don't open your mind. This is the migration CA one thousand and one thousand eight hundred. Years ago, you know, people migrate from one place to another looking for greener pasture with their animals. People's homes are burned by fire because of the old homes are with fire, uh, with grass, so people use it. When the fire comes, it burns them all, they have to migrate to another place. So these are some of the other juices here. And this is a knife, cutlass, sorry, for the pigment. And this one normally, we, nowadays we use it when they are getting married. You know, these are traditional things we use. When they are getting married, oh my God! I think I was one time have to use one. Yes. So this is all the lot of history in this museum. Wow, man! It's a small museum, but a lot of stuffs inside. This is the mining people. Yeah. It's a small museum, but a lot of stuffs inside. Turn at the back, you see the clothes they used to wear. All is full of cotton. No mixture, all cotton clothes. Wow. And in, even in a, an ancient chair. Yeah. So it's an ancient chair. <laughs> there the king used to sit and he put on this kind of clothes. And that's the hat on top of the hair. <sighs> Same thing like this. Empire Victory Parade. In London, it was happened in 8, 8 July 1946. The brave soldiers from all over the British Empire, including the Gambia, gave their lives for the empire during World War II. It was World War for Europeans, not for Africa. Africa for Africans. We are trying to make sure that everybody come together, come and do our own. Look at the kind of stones we use. Look at the kind of weapon we use. These are ancient weapons Africans used to use, and they survived the Second World War. Yes, because the Europeans thought that we will die because of their sake. But thank God we survived. These are the things we put on when you are going for a war. If they fire at you, you will not enter. And I think we'll approach, I'll approach just one for you. But I'll give you one so that if you go there, you'll see physical. That, is, a, that, that, that is amazing. Yeah. So of course, we have them here. We have them here. So when so, the Europeans say, yeah, these are the things they are using, the you know, food counters, these Europeans, useless people, they leave these stuff here. What can this benefit for us? Nothing, absolutely. <laughs> this is the chief of the upper river region of the country. Yeah. This is Mama Tamba Jame. You still they used to sing about it in the sun. You know, besides some of the chiefs we used to have in the Gambia. Yeah. Momatamba Jame and this is Modibo Nyai. These are the chiefs we have in the Gambia. 
she was the Senegambia queen by that time in the 1850s. And we used to have a queen between Senegal and Gambia, so we used to call them Senegambia queens. So, the above Mango Park, this is the man mentioned the items below in his diary. This Mango Park is graveyard is in the Gambia, in a village called Karantaba. He passed away in the Gambia because of mosquitoes. The mosquitoes hate them, that's why they bite them and kill them off. Yes, sir. Yes. Yes. So these are the things we are used to tell our people when taking them to Europe. You see how they lock them? You see how they pose and pull with them? She left story on a plantation American South in the 1860s. Yes, West Africa was once known as the white man's grave because of so many white people yeah. died from um, yeah, malaria and mosquitoes, right? They used to use this for digging, this farming tools. You know, we used to use this for digging, and this is for home, cleaning the grass. This is also used for cleaning the grass, you know, during the farms. And this is the way we used to pound our coos. The women, this is the way they pound. We don't have pounding machines, you see? We have rice, you see how this is coos. This is all, in the, we have them, but we have no good storage. We have no good machineries. You know, to keep, uh, to have more, so we use like these tools, the power, you know, and the health condition is so good here yeah, because all these things, look at the fence, people living in the villages. If you come, you see yourself physical, how people live in the villages. Still, they are suffering for this. Yeah. So there you go, family. Um, when, when our brother talked about storage, so I right. think that these are opportunities for us to invest in as a people. You see, in, in Europe, they have tools. This is our wooden kitchen things. This one, when you want to pound your stuff, like onions and other things, you use this to pound them. And this is where you put them and just turn it around. You know, in, the, uh, in your home, in Europe, the white people, they have their own, but this is our original. These are all made wood, you understand? And this is the one you use, the saucer, to take things out. You know, this is the one you use for stirring in it, you know? Cover wooden spoon, these are spoons made by our own African people. It's all wooden. It's a kind of wooden spoon made by Africans. Right. You see, you buy shoes from Europe. They this is family. the one made African shoes. They make leather shoes. Originally, you see this one is making this an Ude walker. They make this, they are Ude walkers. They take the skin of the animals and then make this. You see, this is the heart they used to make. Because leather bags, they at the market, look at this leather bags at the market stores. Then we have to go. You got an African origin of civilization family. Yeah, this is the one they used to clean our rice with. Mm. Yeah, if you put the rice out here, you clean it. Yes. I remember we having this in the village, we still have it. You know. So, these are some of the things you have here. Like people, when they go for circumcisions, when they are coming out, this is the one they used to have, the sticks they used to have, and enjoy dancing. So these are all for circumcision things. The people come from the circumcision. That's what they used to have. Yeah. So these are some of the stuff they used to have. They're all from circumcision. Yes, I used to have this before. I was also having this. Right. So this is the one you used to for making for dancing. You are happy to be eating them. Yeah, we used to have them. Oh, yeah. But so, is there any other parts of the museum that we missed and or did we cover most of it? Yeah, because you know if you go to different the other parts is there, you know, with the, the Gambia they share the museums in the different stages. Whatever happened, mm -hmm. any activities where it happens, that's where they put the museum in. Tomorrow when we are in Jufre, we are lucky. Look at the local weapons. Yeah, here. And to be clear in the museum we're talking about, is it the Museum of Abreda, the Slave Museum of Abreda, or is it something else? There's a different medium, you know, different, because that's where you see actual life of Kunta Kinde. Mm -hmm. Here you have only the building of Kunta, but when you are there, you see the actual story of Kunta Kinde. Because here, I just said out the, the view of it. But when you are there, you see the actual structure of Kunta Kinde, and you meet the Kunta Kinde family, you see the island, you see how people are put in small bloody well house, how they are put and together. And we are back here real quick. Yeah. This is the This should be the last uh, section we have in the yeah. museum family. This is Africa. The continental terminal of the African continent is made up of an area 
studies along the western coast of Africa, from Mauritania in the north to Sierra Leone in the south. So this is our African map. We have to be part of this. No matter how it is, this is our soil. And this is the profile of Africa. Remember, we have a lot of infrastructures. We have the upland soil. Then here you have the most agricultural products. And then here you have the lowland soil systems. We have the Gambia made of the narrow strip of land, either side of the river Gambia. Then we have we used to have a lot of trees before. But now because of this, European come here and buy our timber. They bring money, buy our timber. So they take them all. So these are all the trees. These and are this all names of all trees we used to have. All Gamb oh. Gambians. But now they are they like, this is the red timber, where is Jalo uh, Koto, Jalo Koto, where is Jalo Koto? Jalo, this is red timber. So they used to have, up. that means it's no longer? Very little, very small. They so, used to buy it So they year. buy it up and take it, but it's not this being continent. replanted? Not, That's actually. They don't give any replantation. Because we, especially we have empty lands, all our animals have run. Because deforestation have taken place. Yeah. The Gambia forest provide us with fuel, wood. We used to have them, you know, but now, come and see, people are using all the charcoals to cook. Yeah, and that's what's the scariest thing about these uh, crazy Euro, Europe, uh, Euro Asians, Asians. You know, yeah. Europe and Asia, which is just all connected Before together. You see, you have uh, just a take, 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 but, uh, uh, you know, we have to preserve for our children. So this is a different mindset, family, and what, we, what we're doing is really just trying to educate you to understand that if we just keep on sucking, sucking, sucking the life out of Africa, we're going to have no continent. And, yeah. 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 Because well, you know, these are, we have all, to, these are all the insects we used to have. <laughs> My brother keep on saying used to have. Yeah, but now we don't have them now because so, of the desert phase. You know, these insects we have them because we need Africa to come back yeah, and then we need to transform more plants, trees. Because now I swear, if I tell you, you go to the woods, you see empty lands. Where all the woods have been cut. People are hungry. So when this European bring this small money, they give it to the farmers. The farmers sell their big tree, they cut it, put it in a container and take it to Europe. These useless agents. You know, this, all these species we used to have them in the Gambia, all these 559 species we used to have. These are bass we, we used to have. All this, this is the kind of eggs they used to lay. But so, come now. So family, what we're talking about is the ecosystem has been destroyed. Destroyed by the European. You lose, you, lo you, 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 you lose one aspect of things because it's, it's kind of like the, 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 the jungle. If you disturb the jungle, uh, then animals start leaving and, Leave. and start you know, doing things that they're not used to doing, so it causes this, I mean, when I talk about ecosystem, we talk about a full balance, the uh, nature, animals, and resources, so it's important. But this one, they are still here, the hippos take, take, are take. still here. The hippos are still here, the coconuts are still here, because the hippos, if you go to the upland country, you have them there, you see them live. Yes, because there's a tour guide, they'll take you through the mangroves. You see, you have these mangroves around Kunta uh, Kauru area, you know, you see them there. We also have these Bamboo Islands all. We have Simpansip Island also. They take you by boat. And this is the erosion system. Uh, look at what erosion have done. Look at how people are living. Mm -hmm. When the wind comes. Desert uh, it's location. All yes, in the provinces. Even me, my home is like this, my unborn home. So it's okay. So these are some of the things. You see what bushfire is doing? Because here we don't have machines. Like if I tell you in the Gambia, Especially in Africa here, we don't have fire and ambulance. There are not many. You count them. We don't have sponsors. You know, people get there. European, they don't want to give us. They only come and take from us. Are we the Africans? We have, and we don't want to bring it back to Africa. If there's a fire, as then the whole village will get fire, and then the whole side of the forest will be burned. Oh, cool. It's, it's, it's about the time. Yeah, yeah, you can continue. Every time you go to the market with the best of them, drop into the market and pick you. All right, cool. I think this should be uh, it. Uh, we just um, uh, we can make our way out of here. Okay, we'll go and then develop. We will. And then uh, we can finalize that uh, set up for us to go to um, Jufaria tomorrow. Yes. Uh, once we walk out. We, we, we walk out. Because because that's what we've been talking about throughout the whole time in the museum. The importance of that connection of Jufaria, Abreda, and also Kunta Kenji Island. So family also let you know that it's all connected. But I was going to make a last point about the about the wetland erosion, the deforestation, and desertification. So what we're trying to explain in our recording is to our, our own people that we keep on letting people take, 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 take from the continent. It's going to just dry. You suck. Yeah.
You know, so yeah. some of these Euro Asians, they feel like it's like an unlimited amount of resources in Africa, mm -hmm. okay. but they've really disturbed the ecosystem. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You look at fifty nine hundred. Nine hundred. Oh. Perfect. So did we take Where it? Where you coming up here? I have, I have some of your money. Perfect. So family, we are gonna close out this museum so we can get things organized for the other aspect of our journey for today and tomorrow. And give me a few seconds, I'll be right back with the family. So this is what we're closing on and appreciate your energy and uh, hopefully enjoy our presentation.